Hey listeners, it's Paul Andriola here. Why not join our community at Small Cap Discoveries where we offer our members direct access to some of the best microcap investment opportunities available. Our members are getting access to premium microcap financings, research reports, and direct access to management. Sign up today at www.smallcapdiscoveries.com. Hi everyone, welcome to the Small Cap Discoveries conference call. Today on our call, we have CEO Mike Robb from AirIQ back for an update. AirIQ trades on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol IQ and on the OTC under AILQF. The company is currently trading at 31 cents with roughly 30 million shares outstanding or about a $9 million market cap. I'd now like to hand it over to Paul Andriola. Thanks so much, Trevor. Uh, great to have Mike back um, for an update. Uh, AirIQ, as everybody knows, is actually one of our um, one of our portfolio uh, stocks. So we always like to get updated as much as we can on on the companies. Um, Mike, before we sort of get into questions, uh, why don't you just remind everybody what AirIQ is all about? Sure, Paul. Uh, thank you, and thank you for having me back again. Um, AirIQ is an IoT based asset management solution company. Uh, we provide solutions to companies that allow them to effectively and efficiently monitor and uh, manage their assets in near real time. Uh, we do that by providing a, a piece of hardware device with uh, cellular connectivity through uh, third parties. And we configure those um, data plans and devices uh, to work on our proprietary platform called AirIQ Fleet. Uh, AirIQ Fleet actually uh, allows the customer to view uh, a number of things uh, regarding their asset, including location, um, you know, regular maintenance schedules, uh, notifications, unauthorized movements, uh, that type of thing. So, uh, and we provide it in a way that uh, is is cost effective and uh, is is uh, provides a good re return on investment for our, our uh, customers. Uh, we be we engage with them to become more like a one-stop one shop for all of the uh, assets that they have under management. So you can imagine that customers have, you know, not only vehicles, but they have uh, a mixed fleet of assets. So powered assets like vehicles, and then they have non-powered assets such as uh, skids and containers and that type of thing. And so we're able to provide a, a wide range of solutions that cover all of their asset needs under one umbrella. So uh, we call those mixed fleets. And uh, we're able to service customers very effectively that way uh, in order for them not to have to deploy uh, another solution from another provider, uh, you know, and we, we kind of uh, allow them to see all of their assets under one AirIQ fleet platform, which is very meaningful for them. Now, um, you know, you just reported your Q2. Um, I was actually... I'd say pleasantly surprised. You, you guys are you grew uh, total revenues by twenty five percent. What uh, what can you tell us about Q two? Maybe maybe give us some of the highlights of uh, your second quarter. Sure, sure. So we were very pleased. Uh, as as you said, overall revenues or total revenues increased by twenty five percent. But what we noticed and what we liked uh, more so was the fact that we had a record uh, monthly recurring revenue. Uh, which uh, resulted in uh, recurring revenues being 859,000 or a 9% increase over the previous year. So with uh, record monthly recurring revenue streams uh, together with continuing to uh, deliver profitable results uh, from gross margin all the way down to uh, you know, net income and producing positive operating cash flows, uh, we were very excited uh, about that. And you know, during the quarter, we also partnered and announced a partnership with uh, Fleetio, uh, which was also a significant, uh, uh, you know, partnership for us that we believe will provide further growth opportunities in the future. And uh, yeah, so we're, we're very pleased with that second quarter and, you know, something to build upon and, and we're very excited about for the next quarters. Yeah, and was there, was there anything else particular with, within that quarter that, that drove that revenue growth? Sure. Yeah, I think there was a couple of things. So we had announced that we received a large order from one of our large longstanding uh, rental uh, customers in the U.S. back in early August. So that was certainly one, uh, one driver of growth in that second quarter. 
And what we also saw was uh, the, uh, in addition to that, was the growth in um, our recurring business from new opportunities that were closed from our lead generation activities that we had started several months ago, but because of COVID, the delay in orders and uh, supply chain issues, that type of thing, delayed some of that. And then once the COVID uh, restrictions started to lift and businesses became a little bit more uh, normalized, I would say, uh, we started to see an influx of those orders and opportunities being closed by our sales team uh, from our lead generation activities. So there was a combination of a few different things there, but uh, certainly those were the key drivers to the growth in Q2. Now, um, when, when we see uh, sort of hardware sales or a bump in hardware sales, there's usually a, a corresponding um, recurring revenue um, increase down the road. Is that not correct? Uh, that's correct, Paul. Yeah, because each one of our uh, solutions is sold with a piece of hardware. So it's safe to say and, and fair to say that, you know, when you see a bump like that in, in uh, hardware sales, that it will come with an increase in recurring revenues over time. Perfect. Um, okay, so the other nice thing is, uh, obviously, as you continue to make money, uh, the cash position grows. Um, so you, your cash balance has been increasing. Just give us a sense of what, what you guys might be using that cash for in the future. Yeah, that's a great question, Paul. So, you know, we view our cash balance as an opportunity to continue to provide uh, shareholder uh, value creation. And we see that happening in a couple of different ways with our, our cash. Uh, one, we've already uh, started and, and you've seen some of the activity that we've had with regards to our NCIB and repurchasing shares to return back into Treasury. I think to date, we're probably close to having repurchased about 650,000 shares uh, at about $200,000. So we've deployed some of our cash when we see the opportunity in the market to create shareholder value that way. Uh, but primarily, we're earmarking that cash balance for potential uh, mergers and acquisition activity. So, you know, we're, we've got a pipeline of, of activities that we're currently following up on. And, and uh, you know, we, we believe that the cash primarily will be used for an acquisition uh, for AirIQ. Um, if we can find the right candidate and the right partner, uh, you know, in the near future. And maybe give investors that are listening a sense of what, what I mean, what are you looking for in an acquisition? Is it, is it more relationship or is it technology? What, what, you know, all of the above, how can you, how can you explain that? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great question, Paul. So, you know, we're, we're open to, you know, obviously again, value creation for our shareholders and investors is first and foremost. Um, you know, we don't want to do a transaction for the sake of just doing a transaction. We want to make sure that it's synergistic and synergy can be, you know, can it lead us into new markets that we currently don't serve? Uh, does it bring, you know, strength to the team that we currently don't have or that we might need in terms of sales and marketing or technology? Um, you know, and, and obviously it has to be, you know, a recurring revenue business. Uh, we want to incrementally in increase our uh, recurring revenue streams because Honestly, you know, it's a higher value margin uh, of our business and subscriptions. So, you know, we look at businesses in, in those ways and seeing if they can fit into one of those uh, categories for us. It would be nice to find one that fits all of those categories, but that's not always possible. Uh, but, uh, you know, certainly that's our objective is to, is to look at businesses that way and maybe expand our, our geography and our reach um, a bit further than where we are in North America right now. Now, um, you know, you recently you, you announced that you've done a uh, or entered a partnership with a company called Connected. Um, maybe explain what that is and, and what the company does and uh, what that does for you guys. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, it's similar to our partnership with Fleetio, um, but Nected in particular is a, uh, a provider of, you know, a solution for snow removal and landscaping companies primarily. Uh, and what they do is they uh, monitor uh, snow plowing and, and snow removal and, and uh, landscaping uh, assets for maintenance, um, you know, workflow issues, um, you know, work orders, all kinds of things, including parts orders, supply chain uh, issues, just streamlining the whole process for those types of companies that allow them to 
uh, take advantage of, of downtime uh, and making sure their assets are uh, functioning at 100% peak during, uh, during those critical times. And where AirIQ comes in is the data that's collected from those devices that our customers have can be fed into uh, that ERP type system that allows them more visibility. Uh, you know, it does create for us a couple of things, um, that partnership along with Fleetio. It, it does allow us to become more sticky with our customers and more ingrained in their operations. And it allows us the opportunity to attract new customers to the AirIQ solution that are part of Nected and vice versa. So, you know, we're very excited about that opportunity with, with Nected and with Fleetio. Uh, and we continue to look for other partnerships of that nature because we believe that, you know, they become in effect a, a sales force for us. And uh, we, we hope that uh, it's reciprocated and uh, it's mutually beneficial for both parties. Great. Um, now, you know, I mean, we've gone through a year and a half of COVID. Um, it's changed a lot of industries. What, what's the current state of, of the IoT sector or your specific uh, part of that sector? Yeah, I think, you know, during during COVID initially, there was a, a bit of delay in, like I said earlier, in ordering uh, because businesses were basically shut down, weren't operating. Um, there wasn't a need for a product or, or service at that time. We helped our customers uh, weather that, uh, that initial wave of COVID uh, very successfully and uh, continue to grow despite, despite the challenges that COVID presented to us, we were able to continue to grow our recurring revenue streams and remain profitable and deliver shareholder value. And, uh, you know, now that, you know, the COVID restrictions have somewhat eased um, in the last six months or so, we're starting to see those orders uh, come in and uh, vehicles being delivered, uh, that type of thing for customers to then uh, want to track and maintain and monitor their assets. So we we're very encouraged by that. Uh, and again, I think that, you know, with the new variant that's come uh, into play, you know, we're hopeful that uh, those businesses can weather uh, that particular uh, strain of, of the uh, of the pandemic. But, you know, it's, it's to be seen whether or not it's going to go back to the way it was. But again, you know, our lead generation activities and uh, our sales team have, have done a masterful job at navigating through all of this, including our technology team by onboarding new products uh, from, from uh, you know, different suppliers uh, to mitigate supply chain issues that have been experienced around the world with the uh, microchip uh, processor shortage, that type of thing. So we've done a fantastic job um, mitigating all of those, uh, you know, tsunamis, as I call them, coming at us in waves and uh, to the point where we're still growing and we have a, a, a robust sales pipeline um, that we're very encouraged about uh, to the effect that we've created the demand and we've actually gone out and hired a, a West Coast uh, sales representative to give us a bigger footprint in the Western part of North America that we haven't had before. So we've created the demand and the pipeline that has warranted the addition of, an addition, uh, of a direct sales rep uh, out in the West Coast. So we're very excited and very encouraged and, and uh, he's been doing well. It's only been about two months now that he's been on board, but uh, we expect great things from him uh, down the road. So that's good. That's good. Now, okay. So you touched on something I was going to ask you. So are you? I mean, you guys sell hardware. Do you, Do you guys see any um, issues with uh, getting components or any material or any of those logistic issues we're hearing about with so many other companies? Yeah, I mean, you know, to be to be fair, I think that uh, you know, if you're in our space, I think uh, you're not. Uh, uh, you know, you're, you've been faced with that. Uh, mm -hmm. We certainly were with uh, one of our suppliers. And what we were able to do very quickly was to, you know, look for replacement suppliers, replacement devices, and onboard them very effectively and, and time effectively. So we didn't, uh, you know, miss a beat. Uh, we had an inventory uh, stock uh, that allowed us to continue to, you know, fulfill orders and, and process uh, contracts as they came in. And once that was depleted and, you know, uh, that uh, particular supplier's product was no longer available or wasn't coming in as timely as we needed it to, uh, we quickly onboarded other uh, suppliers, other devices. So we carry a wide range of different suppliers and we have a good inventory uh, uh, level now that uh, will continue to 
you know, produce uh, the results that we need when sales opportunities present themselves. So we don't, we don't uh, worry about that as much as we did, you know, maybe a year ago. Uh, we're, we're very well positioned in that way now. I just got a question that came in from one of the listeners. Um, I mean, it, it seems like there's a number of sort of uh, competitors in your field. How, how, do, how do we distinguish you guys from everybody else that's out there? Yeah, it's a, that's a great question. I think that, you know, there is a lot of uh, similar uh, companies to Air IQ uh, in, our, in our space that we, uh, you know, do run up against from time to time. I think what we've been able to do is carve out a particular niche in the market with the small to medium sized enterprises uh, mm -hmm. that uh, the others don't uh, necessarily pay attention to or, you know, look at, look at smaller or larger opportunities. We found a real niche uh, in our space. Um, you know, serving the construction uh, markets, the commercial transport markets um, that the bigger players don't necessarily pay attention to. And so, you know, our customers' care is, is second to none. Um, our technology team is, is there to help with customers in, in real time and be part of their business. We, we really focus on becoming a, a partner to our customers' business. And I know that a lot of companies and CEOs will say that, but for Air IQ, that's absolutely true. I mean, I've been involved with calls from, you know, customers requesting certain uh, assistance with a, a problem that they're having uh, to help solve something internally. And, you know, we've engaged with them and, and we bring the team together and we work with them hand in hand. Uh, so, you know, we differentiate ourselves in terms of service levels and in terms of, of flexibility of our products and pricing. Uh, and we remain very competitive in, in a very uh, niche market segment, which is small to medium sized uh, enterprises within different market segments. I, mean, I, I imagine that's a, it's a healthy growing market because we, we know, you know, SMBs have been growing, you know, quite, quite well uh, for, for a long time now. I guess the question, um, the, the growth that we're seeing, is it, is it a function of just, you know, capturing your sort of normal market share or are you growing market share within within that, that industry? Yeah, I, I think, you know, it's it's twofold. We're, we're seeing growth not only within our existing customer base, mm -hmm. we're also seeing uh, growth within new customers being being onboarded. And uh, that's due to the fact that, you know, we're, we're a longstanding company uh, with great results, great technology, great people, but we've also onboarded two new products I think I'd mentioned before in the past year, which was the uh, fully integrated video telematics solution and the battery power device. Right. Those two things of an, of them, in and of themselves has actually created uh, market penetration in areas that we didn't have the ability to penetrate before. So, you know, the battery power device, for example, allowed us to, you know, reach out to customers that didn't have powered assets, uh, which is which is a great product for us that you know moves us away from our traditional line of business, but expands our footprint and our our offering. Um, and same with the video fully integrated video telematics uh, solution. Very very excited about that. It's higher ARPU. Uh, it is a terrific return on investment for our shareholders uh, to help them with distracted driving. Uh, safe, safer driving, insurance claims, that type of thing in real time. Again, all of these things are under one platform, one view. Uh, customers love it. And we've actually started to penetrate into markets that we haven't been able to uh, be a part of before. Uh, those two products were brought on board. So, and then on top of that, with all of our other, you know, traditional type product offerings, uh, customers in those new segments are, are excited about those too. So again, we become this one-stop shop for customers looking to protect a large uh, array of different assets. And we can do that under, under our portfolio. Mm -hmm. I should have asked you more about that <laughs> earlier because that, that, you know, clearly one of the things we always like to see with a company that's, that's sort of, you know, profitable and growing is the launch of new products, right? Yeah. Um, and this video product was a, a pretty key product for you guys. Um, I guess two questions, maybe tell us a little bit more about who, who is the customer for that type of product. And then, you know, going forward, what other areas are you looking to innovate in or, or launch new products into, if any, right now? Yeah, sure, Paul. Um, yeah. So, 
you know, customers um, that require the uh, fully integrated telemax solution would be commercial transport companies. Mm -hmm. uh, service fleets, for example, are, are a big uh, growing market for us. So HVAC companies, electricians, uh, couriers, this type of thing. They are uh, very interested in knowing uh, how their drivers are, are performing, uh, whether they're, you know, distracted for any reason uh, mm -hmm. at all. Um, and, you know, whether they're harsh braking, you know, rapid acceleration, harsh cornering, all kinds of things uh, certainly play into the safety. Uh, so it allows them to uh, better train their, their drivers um, in, in a way that they weren't able to before. And also, you know, we've had lots of instances where, you know, theft during COVID especially has been a big, uh, a big area. Uh, we've had lots of instances where the camera has been installed in, say, a service fleet. Um, you know, basically you can catch the, the thieves removing high value product out of a service vehicle, say an HVAC company or, you know, an electrician or anything like that in real time uh, by, you know, sending an alert along with a video, uh, a location, this type of thing. And they're able to recover assets uh, pretty, pretty uh, consistently. So they're very, very happy with that. So those are the markets that would require and, and like to use the video uh, telematic solution. Uh, the companies that like the um, uh, battery power device are, are, you know, again, construction companies, uh, waste disposal companies, that type of thing that, you know, again, they, they're not sure. It, it's unbelievable. You would, you would think that a, a waste disposal company would know where their disposal bins are. But you think about, you know, um, renovation companies, these types of things, or, uh, you know, um, rental equipment companies, they, they don't always know. Um, and they lose sight of billing, they lose sight of assets, this type of thing. And with our solution, uh, they're able to track it uh, and monitor it and know where it is and how long it's been there. And it really creates uh, value for them. So those are the types of customers that would require and, and like to use that battery power device, along with our construction companies that you know have skids of, of product and lumber and this type of thing that you know they couldn't track before. And, and you know, unfortunately, uh, those things go uh, go missing from time to time, <laughs> especially during COVID. So we're happy to help them uh, recover uh, those assets with those various products that we offer. For sure, for sure. And as far as looking forward, where, where do you see innovation coming? Uh, one, one of the questions I've got here is related to R and D and and the spend that you guys have. Do you do you, do you want to spend more money in R and D? Do you guys think you are going the right direction in terms of innovation? What, what can you tell us about that? Yeah, for sure, Paul. I think that, you know, AirIQ um, used to build build a solution and hope that customers would come. Mm -hmm. we, we don't do that anymore. Since I took over as CEO, I, we don't do that anymore. We look at, you know, particular customers' needs, uh, particular uh, market needs, that type of thing. And if the demand is there, if we can be assured that the demand is there, then we deploy a solution, we work around it. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, the video telematics solution was a prime example of that, where, you know, a lot of the demand was being generated from our reseller channel, uh, saying we need a video product, we need a video product. And so, you know, we didn't really, you know, build the video telematics solution and hand it to our reseller or direct channel uh, salespeople. We, we allowed them to bubble up the need to us and then we deployed. And so it's been that's been our mantra uh, for many years now. So, you know, we do see that there will be a need for things like uh, small tool uh, tracking. Uh, we do see the need for fuel monitoring systems, uh, things like that. So theft of fuel is a big area now. Um, you know, employees going to fill up on a, on a company's gas card and taking, uh, you know, some gas away in a jerry can for their own personal use or, you know, siphoning it out of uh, commercial vehicles. It, it's remar remarkable, but we see those two types of things as being more near-term uh, opportunities that have been bubbling up uh, more so in the, in the near, in the present future, in the present and then into the future. So I think, you know, those two things we're looking at uh, today to con uh, continue the innovation of our product and to bring more completeness to the uh, solution as we build it out. So, you know, beyond that, we're not uh, we're not seeing anything else that we don't have uh, that customers or potential customers have brought to our attention that uh, mm -hmm. we need to kind of onboard at this point. 
that seems an, uh, you know, a sound strategy. You listen to your customers and uh, be reactive to what their needs are. Um, that, that, yeah, so that, that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, now, you, earlier you mentioned that you've got a new salesperson in the West Coast. Um, is, is that a focus of yours now? I mean, do you expect to hire more salespeople and, and increase uh, your, your sort of footprint? Yeah, I, I think right now, Paul, because, you know, again, it's kind of like, uh, the the product innovation you know mm -hmm. where's the demand if the demand is there we fill it mm -hmm. luckily and thankfully we've been you know very creative in, in creating uh, pipeline demand through our third party lead generation and our marketing activities mm -hmm. so what I like to do in all cases is create the demand and then fill it uh, you know address the demand by adding either new products or new salespeople so you know we we have a a, a bustling pipeline, sales pipeline that warranted. So I've created the demand. Now, you know, one sales direct salesperson couldn't do it all, right? One person can't be expected to sell product across North America on their own, um, doing a fantastic job. But, you know, really with the pipeline that we had, we felt that there was an opportunity to actually, you know, get two more of that pipeline faster uh, if we added another salesperson. And because we didn't have uh, the focus on the West Coast, like we do on the East Coast, being you know in Ontario and East, uh, because that's where our direct uh, salesperson resides, is in Ontario. Uh, we felt that you know there was a huge market uh, out there. Again, looking at our sales pipeline, the opportunities, uh, we felt that you know it, it made sense to drop somebody into that location uh, that could address uh, the West Coast of of uh, North America on a direct channel basis. Mm -hmm. So we're very excited about that. And again, the demand was there, just like uh, the demand for, say, a new product is there, we address it. And, that, and that's what we've done. So mm -hmm. we're, we're hopeful that uh, they're able to, to move the needle forward uh, as we go into the uh, next couple of quarters. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, what, what, what does their IQ look like, say, three to five years from now? And I don't mean like revenue-wise, but give me a sense of geographically and, and sort of product suite, what, what do you want to see this business look like uh, in that time frame? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think there's still lots of opportunity uh, for AirIQ to grow in North America. Um, I think that, you know, we keep our eyes and ears open for opportunities outside of North America. And we've had a couple of that have, you know, we've tested the, the waters with that uh, didn't uh, amount uh, to, to anything at this point. Not to say that, if, again, if the opportunity is there, we'll look at it and we will expand geographically into other, other areas of the world. Uh, but there is a lot of growth potential still within the North American market. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, you know, as we look at our team today, you know, we're, we're you know, a small team. We're a small team, but we're very agile, as my development team likes to say. We're very agile and we pick up uh, opportunities as they come at us and we, we shift uh, the, the workflow and, and uh, the focus, and we're very successful at that. So I don't see that AirIQ will be, you know, expanding uh, from a personnel perspective, you know, much beyond where we are today, um, unless, of course, we are successful in uh, acquiring another business. Uh, and with that comes, you know, personnel, but with that will also come hopefully recurring revenue streams and uh, profitability and synergies that we could leverage. And uh, so, you know, outside of that type of event happening, I don't see that, uh, you know, there's any reason to really, you know, change what we're doing. We've been successful. We have a long track record of, of success. And I think that, uh, you know, we just uh, put our heads down and keep doing what we're doing. Lean and mean seems to come to mind. Uh... Uh, in talking to you and, and and Michael for everybody that doesn't know I've I've been talking to Michael probably for the last four or five years maybe even longer I've lost track yeah. and um lean and mean is uh is something that keeps coming to mind when when I think of you guys yeah um listen, listen Mike um for investors what what should what sort of key metrics or maybe even catalysts should investors watch out for sort of over the next say you know call it three six nine months yeah, so one of the things I, I failed to mention during our, our highlights of our second quarter was, you know, the, the rule of 40 score of 31 uh, that, that, we, uh, that we achieved. So, you know, one of the metrics that we are looking at internally as, as a team and that we're being gauged against uh, internally and benchmarked against is, is our recurring revenue streams growing? 
are, are they growing and at what rate we would like to achieve double digit recurring revenue growth uh, over time. Uh, we think we're, we're there, we think we're delivering that. Uh, and it, you can see that with our results. Um, and we have you know, record monthly recurring revenue streams that are only going to help us get to that, uh, that point faster. Um, the other metric that we're focusing on is this rule of 40 uh, metric, which is used by investors to determine whether or not a company is efficient in operating uh, effectively. Uh, and it's the combination of the year to year over year growth in revenue uh, plus the, uh, the margin uh, percentage. So, you know, we've been very successful. Um, you know, we've been at 28, 27 uh, of, of the 40 uh, score in the past. We're at 31 now uh, with, you know, 9% or, or nine, a score of nine of that 31 being recurring revenue growth. Uh, we want to put more emphasis on uh, the revenue growth part of that equation than, say, the margin growth, uh, EBITDA operating profit growth. We feel that by investing some of our profits back into sales and marketing activity will get us there. And we want to shift our focus away from being, you know, a, a highly huge, uh, highly uh, profitable company into a more a profitable company still, don't get me wrong, still profitable, but growing faster at the recurring revenue line. So we're really excited. So the two metrics that we look at, and I would encourage investors to look at are recurring revenue growth and our rule of 40 score. Uh, those are the two things that we're focused on and uh, would encourage our shareholders to follow along with us. And we're excited to see uh, how, we, how we perform against those metrics uh, going into the next few quarters. We'll, we'll be watching for sure. Um, we're sort of near the end here, uh, Mike. Um, any any key message or any key takeaway you want investors to, to walk away from uh, today? Yeah, Paul, thank you so much. Um, you know, again, AIQ has a long track record of delivering, you know, recurring revenue growth, profitability, um, cash flows. We have a clean balance sheet, no debt. Um, we think our cash can be deployed in such a way to create uh, shareholder value uh, in the ways that I mentioned before through NCIB or maybe a, a potential acquisition. Um, and you know what, we, we look at where we're trading at, to be honest, uh, against others in our, our space and in a publicly traded environment. And quite frankly, we're trading well below uh, those other competitors in our space. And so we believe that you know, Air IQ provides a potential upside investment uh, for investors uh, at this point compared to others in, in our space. So, you know, I, I'm really encouraged about where we are today, uh, where we're headed, uh, the opportunities in front of us. And, uh, you know, I would encourage investors to take a, a good look at us and against the other competitors in our space. And I'm telling you, it's, it's a, you know, a potentially good value return for, for them uh, going forward. So we're very excited. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely agree. Um, Mike, uh, congratulations on a, on a, I mean, solid quarter. I mean, you guys continue to put the numbers up uh, for as long as I've known you. Um, if, if somebody wants more information, if somebody's listening, wants to find out more about AIRIQ, uh, what's your website address or what's the best way they can get uh, uh, in contact? Yeah, for sure. So um, our website is uh, just www.airiq.com. Uh, we do have uh, an investor relations line that can be reached through our, our telephone or through our uh, website. And we encourage our, our uh, shareholders, investors to reach out. We're very responsive and I'm, I'm happy to take calls and, and to talk about AirIQ and where the business is going to anyone that uh, is interested. So uh, we'd love to have that conversation with anyone out there that's uh, interested in having that with me. Fantastic. Uh, so today we've been speaking with uh, CEO Mike Robb from Air IQ Incorporated. Mike, thanks for joining us today. And we're, we're going to watch you to, to see how fast you can get to that uh, rule of 40. Great. Thank you, Paul, so much. I appreciate your time and your interest in Air IQ and uh, look forward to the next time we get a chance to talk. Excellent. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye.